Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you a lot for allowing me to be up here and, and share our work on bacterial phages. So uh, phages are viruses that specifically infect and kill bacteria. This could make them a great asset in the war against antimicrobial resistance, but they get al they're also a very uh, valuable source of inspiration for uh, biotechnological applications. So we find them very interesting because phages are able to infect and convert their bacterial host cell in a virus-producing machine within a matter of minutes. And the way they do it so efficiently can be rooted back into their DNA and the way they regulate gene expression. So when the phage is finding its host cell, it will inject the genetic material, material and start transcription in a very systematic way. So initially, it will uh, start expressing a subset of early proteins, of early genes, sorry, that um, will help the phage do the ta host takeover process, where after it will, uh, the phage can start replicating itself. And finally, new virus particles are being produced that then can then escape the cell and start another round of infection all over again. So one of the keys to this well-timed expression program um, is a refined transcriptional uh, regulatory mechanism, sorry. And it's exactly this that we are very interested in trying to understand and why we are looking at their transcriptomes. But nowadays, phage transcriptomics is still mainly driven by um, Illumina-based approaches. But one of the main challenges of working with phages or viruses in general is that they have incredibly compact genomes, which makes it much more difficult to understand also what is happening there on a transcri transcriptome level because they are very dense. So for example, here you can see a genome of a phage that we have been working with in our lab. And this, this is the transcriptome data we are getting from Illumina sequencing approaches. Now, in the past, this has already helped us a lot in improving their annotations of the genomes and gaining insight into these temporal expression systems and uh, interesting host responses on the bacterial sites. But when you look at this kind of data, it's still very hard to make out what is happening there and how are, when are transcripts starting, when are they terminated, what is the original composition. And one of the reasons for this is because um, classic RNA sequencing approaches do not discriminate between primary and processed transcripts, which makes it it's very easy to overlook key transcriptional features. That is why we are very interested in these primary transcripts. These are transcripts that did not undergo any form of processing or decodation and therefore still have their original transcriptional boundaries, which makes them interesting for us to figure out initiation and termination sites of transcription. But one of the problems is that they only make up for a tiny fraction of the RNA population within a bacterial cell. So we needed to find ways to enrich this population in our RNA sample. And we did this using the capable seq methods. So these primary transcripts have all have a three phosphate group at their five prime ends. And this three phosphate group can be kept with a biotinylated tag using a capping enzyme which would then allow us to specifically capture the primary transcripts with streptovidin beads. Now, we wanted to use this enrichment procedure and combine it with the nanopore sequencing platform, which would then allow us to sequence these primary transcripts in full length and read out transcription initiation sites, termination sites, and operon structures all in one shot. So here you can see a little bit more in detail of the, the, what we did, and we are calling our approach ONT Capable Seek. So we started from extracting RNA um, at different stages during the phage infection, where after we kept the primary transcript using the capable seq method I just explained. Then we needed to implement a in vitro polyadenylation step to make it compatible with the nanopore platform. Where after uh, we split the sample in two, used one sample to be enriched and the other one would serve as a control. And then we uh, reverse transcribed the the samples, PCR amplified them using the CDNI PCR barcoding kits of Nanopore, multiplexed the samples, and put them together on a Promethei and Flow cell. Now, during our library preparation, we also wanted to make sure that everything was working according to plan, and we compared the, uh, the RNA profiles we got of the bioanalyzer before our library prep and after. And here you can see that in our original RNA sample and in our control RNA sample, you can see that you can see these really high peaks, which represent the, the high amount of 
processed RNA like the ribosomal RNA species. However, after enrichment, you can no longer recognize these peaks, indicating that our enrichment seems to be at work. This is also reflected in what we see after sequencing, whereas in our control sample, almost all of the reads are mapping due to genomic features like ribosomal RNA, whereas after our enrichment, a lot more of the, of the reads can be attributed, attributed to relevant coding sequences. So once we generated the data, we were specifically interested in figuring out the transcriptional boundaries and the regulatory elements that are residing in these regions. And this is where nanopore sequencing has become truly revolutionary and a really game, cha game changer for us. So here you can see, again, um, a part of a transcriptome of a phage that we sequenced using Illumina sequencing technology compared to the data that we are getting using our ONT capable seq approach where it becomes much more straightforward to unravel where the transcript starts and where they end. So using this approach, we've been able to, to really look at these phage transcriptomes in great detail and generate genome-wide maps of their transcription initiation site, termination sites, expression levels, and operon structures. Uh, and it, it's all summarized in this figure. I'm, I'm not going to go into the details, but I just want to direct your attention to some interesting transcriptional patterns that we also observed. So for example, in this genomic region, we saw um, a region that there was a lot of transcriptional read-through happening across multiple terminators in the phage genome. So depending on the terminator that is being used, transcripts that start at the exact same location can incorporate up to five additional genes. So this is very interesting for us to see that the phages might be using these inefficient terminators as a way to properly balance out its gene regulation, its gene expression according to the needs um, it has. Then another example um, we were very surprised to saw here in this intergenic region that there was a lot of transcription activity going on. This you can see over here. So we noticed a lot of really small RNA species over there that might indicate that there's there are some uh, small RNAs th in there that also could be very important for the regulatory strategy of the phage. But it's just to show you all the different kinds of things that we can do and see with our technique and how it's really allowing us to see um, regulatory elements that have been pre previously overlooked. <coughs> so with this, I hope I've given you a glimpse of the world of phages and, um, sorry, <laughs> the world of phages and all the things that we are doing with it. Um, so we are able to unravel their dense transcriptomes, which is not only important for us to understand them from a fundamental biology perspective, but could also drive future applications for phages into therapeutic settings or also in uh, synthetic biology and biotechnological applications in general. And with this, I would like to thank um, my, yeah, all of you here, the people from Nanopore for inviting me, all my colleagues from the Lab of Gene Technology, with a special thanks to my supervisor, Professor Lopkrop Lavinia. I would also like to thank Maarten, Jurina, Evelyn, and um, all of you guys who voted for me. Thank you.